not supporting the bills. Uh, joining me now is Cliff Albright, the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. He was one of the Georgia voting rights activists who skipped attending the president's speech in person. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you for your time. Let's start here. You, you initially, before the speech, says that uh, uh, we don't need another speech, uh, that you need some action. Now that the president, the vice president, have delivered those speeches, was there anything more consequential in those speeches than you expected there would be? Hey, thanks for having me, Victor. Um, definitely the the points about the filibuster from both the vice president and the president. I actually think that the vice president's speech hasn't gotten a lot of attention. But um, the points about the filibuster, the strong call to, to modify the rules for the filibuster, or as he said, to end it in regards to voting rights, that was a strong call. Uh, that's that's closer to the kind of thing that we wanted to, to hear. We still, some of us would have liked to have seen a little bit more laid out in terms of an outline of what the next actions would be. But we're starting to see that as soon as today, um, as you all have talked about in terms of him, him and the vice president making phone calls and, and going to the caucus meeting tomorrow. Those are exactly the kinds of actions that our coalition was was calling for more so than the speech. We would have loved for the speech to have been given in D.C. and then they could have started on some of those actions even yesterday, including uh, some of the voting that could have started on yesterday. But we're glad that we're at the point where we're at now. We just need to see this this act, these actions go real deep with these real phone calls to see what he says to the caucus tomorrow. That'll really determine whether or not we're able to get where we need to get by Monday. Well, the president said in his speech that he has been having these quiet conversations for months. Uh, and now he says with this speech, he was tired of being quiet. He suggests that what you've been looking for, what you've been asking for, he's already been doing. It hasn't been effective. Uh, not exactly, Victor. I think, you know, one of, the, one of the hidden stories in the speech, and again, I don't want to take away from it. He made, he, he made the call that we wanted to hear. But think about that, that sentence that you just said, I'm tired of being quiet. What he said immediately before that is, I've been having these quiet conversations for two months. You go back and watch it or read the transcript. He said yeah. for two months. So if not for the lead about the filibuster, what the lead of that speech could have been is, Mr. President, are you telling me that you've only been having these conversations since December? Mm. And so we have been in the streets and at the White House all throughout 2021. Those conversations should have really started on, on, on January 21st, especially given what had just happened in January 6th. But be that as it may, uh, it didn't start soon enough. But he's doing it now. And so we want to lean in with him and with everybody listening, because everybody's got a role to play. The president has a role to play. Um, mm -hmm. Senator Schumer has a role to play. Everybody has a role to play in terms of getting this Democratic caucus to do the things that people put them in power to do. If a majority can be used in states to suppress the vote, then a majority should be all that we need in the Senate in order to protect our voting rights and protect this democracy. You make an interesting point about uh, having these quiet conversations for two months, also considering that it's been six months since that speech at the National Constitution Center uh, in, in Philadelphia. Let me play for you what we heard today from the minority leader in the Senate, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, his reaction to the, the, the president's speech. The president's rant, rant yesterday was incoherent, incorrect, and beneath his office. He used the phrase Jim Crow 2.0 to demagogue a law that makes the franchise more accessible than in his own state of Delaware. He blasted Georgia's procedures regarding local elections officials while pushing national legislation with almost identical language on that issue. What's your reaction to what you're hearing there? <laughs> my, my reaction is this is coming from, from Mitch McConnell, uh, who, who, as we know, if, if he's complaining about people trying to break the Senate, he's the one who's broken the Senate. And so, you know, we can't really take anything. Again, this is the same person that, that has said that there's no such thing as voter suppression going on, that the, that the filibuster has never been used to block voting rights, even though there's a, a history going back to the 1870s of the filibuster being used to block, to block civil rights. That's what it's been used the most for. I can't really take anything 
everything Mitch McConnell takes seriously. But the fact that he's giving a speech is the evidence of what? It's the evidence that we are winning. It's the evidence that he's concerned, that he is scared about the fact that this president is now on the same page with, with the groups that have been pushing him to do more and all on the same page of Senator Schumer, who is reintroducing these bills and is going to be introducing the Senate reforms. That's what has Mitch McConnell scared the same way that it's our voting power that has him and other Republicans all across, particularly within these 19 states that have passed these bills. People don't cheat when they're winning. People cheat when mm -hmm. they're losing. That's what Mitch McConnell is doing right now. Well, Cliff, you say he's scared. It doesn't look like uh, the couple of votes that the Democrats need to change the filibuster to make some uh, moves on voting rights are going to shift. But we shall see. Uh, the work continues from uh, your group, Black Voters Matter. Uh, Cliff Albright, thanks so much. Thank you.